ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the the podcast. I have with me today uh, Mary Swanson. H- how are you doing today, Mary? Um, I'm doing well. <laughs> Um, we are going to play, or she is going to play, a VR game um, that you've never played b- before, right? Correct. It is called Gorn VR, um, and if she gets too scared during it, <laughs> then we're going to switch to a different VR game. I don't... Mm. There's, the, there's the gate in front of you I with the, the guy. Gate. I see the guy. So once you salute that person, then the guy is going to come towards you. Perfect. So you're recording, right? You see the yeah, the, I see the, the little right. dot. <laughs> so you, once you salute, he's gonna come towards you. Okay. Now you gotta hold down on the grip triggers and punch him in the face. Okay. Okay. And talk to me while you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you're probably gonna die a couple times. It's gonna be okay. Cause once he dies, then and you another can, one comes out. And then two more oh. comes out. Oh, but, it's like the kindergarten. But you can you can pick him up and like throw him on the ground too. Sure. All right, you ready? Mm. Okay, salute. I did. Yeah, it's on. Yep, okay. Is the gate, the gate is lowering? Yeah, All right. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta punch him. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did it. You killed him? You. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, he has weapons. I just have fists. You can take the weapon from him. How do I take the weapon, Sam? You, you punch him. <laughs> 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 this is really effective for our audio listeners. All right, so Mary, you got engaged recently. Yes. What was that like? I'm running away. Sorry. Oh gosh. Um, that was pretty cool. <laughs> pretty neat. Pretty neat. Pretty neat experience. Were you expecting to be engaged? This year or just in life? Like at the point when you got engaged. Oh, kind of. I had an inkling, but then my whole family was gaslighting me. So... <laughs> oh, I died. So, hold on. Okay. No, I had a suspicion that, because he wanted like a specific, Take up your weapon he wanted me to ask for a specific day off so that we could go hiking. Uh-huh. And I was like, why is it so important that we go hiking? Like, it's okay. We can go whenever. And he's like, no. <laughs> okay. And so then I was like, that seems sussy. So I talked to my mom. <laughs> and I was like, mom, doesn't this seem kind of sussy? And she's like, no, Mary. I think you're just reading into it. And you're going to get your expectations up. But she knew the whole time. So <laughs> it was just a ploy. Is he still... Oh. Oh. Sorry. Anyways, um, I had an idea, and I was right, but it's okay. You were involved in my youth group. Correct. How did that happen? How, um, Tell me the whole story. The whole story. From the beginning. Okay. The very beginning. You were born in the year 2000. <laughs> <laughs> Not um, that far. I started, well, we had trans, like, transferred, I guess that's the correct word. Or we joined Christ Redeemer. There we go. Um my when I was in eighth grade and so I did Sunday school there and everything and then I eventually needed to get confirmed so I joined confirmation classes Mm -hmm. and it was all right I didn't really know what to think of it at the point but then they asked me to come to one of the youth group meetings and I was like sure and so I went and then I fell in love with it and then I just stayed and they couldn't get rid of me (laughs) Then I asked if they needed any extra help after I graduated, and they did, so I just stuck around until... That was much shorter than I... I, I mean, there's not a whole lot. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were in high school for a time, yes. four years to be exact. Mm-hmm. Give or take. Give or take. <laughs> What was the biggest lesson you learned in high school? In high school? Um, I don't know. I think probably, I don't know, from watching just like other kids, it just felt like it was always really important to have like know what was going on at all times and like just to be in on everything. And then I was just kind of like, I don't have to do that. 
because as long as I know what I'm doing and I'm focusing on my school and my friends, I don't need to know what's happening in the whole student body. And it, mm -hmm. I don't know, it became less exhausting when I understood that. Valid. If that made any sense. All right, so my mic is about to die. <laughs> Okay. I need you to tell a story to the audience that is going to take enough time for me to go get new batteries for the <laughs> mic. <laughs> Do you, can you come up with a story that, uh, that'll take approximately a minute and 30 seconds? Um, I, don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think. It's also really hard because this man is dancing. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay, he's down. Um, okay, what kind of story? Does any, I'm trying to... Any kind of story. You really like Harry Potter. I do really like Harry Potter. Tell me the story of how you come to like Harry Potter and that very special birthday present from that oh. very special person. Catherine? Not that, not got that Catherine, other Catherine, but yes. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right, cool. <laughs> BRB. Okay, so I... My mom always showed us the Harry Potter movies. And um, I enjoyed watching the movies. So I guess summer, I'm trying to think. My s sophomore year of college, I decided to actually read the Harry Potter books because I had never actually read them. So I read them and then after knowing all the details and just how everything actually happened and all the little backstories, I enjoyed it so much more. And then my favorite character are the Weasley twins. My favorite characters are the Weasley twins, but most specifically Fred Weasley. So the actor, James Phelps, he has this like cameo thing where he can like do video recordings as like little birthday messages or whatnot. So my sister for my 21st birthday bought me a cameo from him and he wished me happy birthday and it was very exciting. Cool. <laughs> my mic's not on yet, so they'll, they'll only hear me through your mic. Okay. Um, what is your favorite food? Um, hamburgers. Why? Because you can do lots of different things with hamburgers. It doesn't have to just be like the classic like American cheeseburger. You can do whatever you want with it. And I think that's exciting. Because like I've had a peanut butter and banana one. And that's been my favorite cheeseburger I've ever had. So I just like that you can eat the same meal all the time. But it doesn't have to taste the same every time. All right. My mic is now on. So I got to do a, a sound, sound mix thing. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do a clap. A clap. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was gonna do it. Yeah, but it still made me scared. <laughs> um in the past year, what do you wish you could have done differently? In the past year? Yes. Mm. I guess probably studied French a bit more so that I <laughs> would be more prepared for French too than I currently am. I'm not very familiar with French 2 or French 1. It's French 1 was pretty simple. It was just kind of like the basic. We. Oui. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now French 2 is just going more into like the nitty gritty and more of like the grammar aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And it's a tad intimidating. Do you ever wonder what other planets are like to live on other planets yeah like in our like saturn sure that <laughs> is another planet wait, okay, so yeah sorry, sorry, wait, sorry no i misunderstood the question when i first read it. okay now i know um i feel like saturn saturn would be the that's the cold one or is that neptune i have no clue well, i think one neptune that's is like super the freezing one. cold saturn like, is the one with the rings yeah i know that but i'm <laughs> I'm trying to channel my interstellar knowledge. Uh-huh. Um, I'm pretty sure Saturn's the really cold one. And then I don't think I'd like living on Jupiter because I don't even like thunderstorms on this planet. Uh -huh. So I can't really imagine that being very fun. And there's no floor to Jupiter, so that'd be kind of difficult. 
No floor? It's a gas giant. Oh. It means it's just a bunch of gas. No, yeah, I know. And then, I guess, I don't know. I guess Mars would be cool. I feel like that would be fine. Mars would be dope. If you had the opportunity to go to the moon, spend a weekend on the moon, or spend a month on Mars, which one would you do? I would rather do a weekend on the moon. But the weekend on the moon... <gasps> he has arrows. Is, ...is free. No. The weekend on on the moon costs a hundred bucks, and the 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 month on Mars, you get paid five hundred bucks. I wait, so I get paid five hundred dollars to live on Mars for a month. Yes. But then it costs five hundred dollars to live it, on the moon. For it costs one hundred dollars to live on the moon for a weekend. Yes. I would still do the moon on a weekend because I just don't think five hundred dollars is worth. So how much month. money is worth a trip to Mars for a month? Mm, probably like a million, I would say. A million dollars? I would say a million because, listen, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do on Mars. I don't know. Like, I'm just going to sit there in scary space and, like, one wrong move could, like, suck me into the void uh -huh. and then... Yeah, and then I'm away from my family and everything for a month in this, like, scary location. Yeah, I think a million dollars would have to cut it. So you're saying, if I said, Mary, I will give you $50,000 right now if you agree that you will come to Mars for a month. I think you overestimate my desire <laughs> to, to travel intergalactically. Um, I, I personally don't think I would take you up on that. I don't know. That's just, fake news. That just sounds kind of scary. Fifty thousand dollars? That sounds scary. No amount of money. <laughs> well, that makes sense because it's a six-month trip anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you had to go to Mars for a month <laughs> and you had to bring along two plus ones, a plus two, I guess. A plus two. Plus two. Which would be your plus twos? Um, I'd bring Mark. Because he would actually kind of have some sort of survival instinct. Who's Mark? <laughs> That's my fiance. Whoa! Whoa. And then um, I would probably bring my mom. Mrs. Wendy herself? Mrs. Wendy herself. Um, are you a night owl or a morning person? Night. Why do you think that is? Because I like to stay up and read. So <laughs> I just... I, I have a perfect little reading setup right now. I'm very excited about it. I put on my little lo-fi girl beats. Uh-huh. And then I light a candle, and I have my little string lights on. Is it like a Spotify playlist, or is it like the YouTube it's live the YouTube video? YouTube live. I, would, I used to do that when I was at um, Academy of Creative Education. What is Oh, is that, that's the recent one. <laughs> yeah. What is that? I, I would just pop on lush lo-fi lo-fi girl i like being able to look up and see the little little scenery change uh-huh it's nice scenery change well yeah well so there's two that i've discovered that are like live so there's the one that's sleep and oop sorry <laughs> <laughs> sleep and relax to and or study and that's the one with the cat mm. and then there's another one where she's like on her bed either reading or she's taking a nap with the cat. Mm. So. Dope. Ah. Have you ever played Minecraft? That's so funny. He accidentally hit his, own, his opponent. Now they're <laughs> hitting each other. How, how do you feel about the game so far? Um, It's all right. It's not as scary as I thought it would be. Do you have a I'm, weapon yet? No. I literally, I'm trying to get this one right now, but I'm, it's not succeeding. Uh-huh. Can I just take it out of his hands? Or do, I oh, think so. Oh, he just fell off the side of the cliff. If, if he's dead, then you should be able to grab it. I didn't even, I didn't even touch them that time. <laughs> they just, like, walked off to the edge and just fell. And, okay. Jit tripping for real. Can I do that? Can I just lure them to the edge so I, I don't guess. have to fight them? Uh-huh. 
Hmm. That's a theory. I believe in uh, a few conspiracy theories. Okay. I believe there were multiple shooters at JFK's assassination. Sure. Um, and that it was probably an inside job. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe aliens exist. They've pulled up to Earth. And they were like, or, and the U.S. has kept it hidden, and they have, like, a bunch of flying saucers that they experiment with. Not at Area 51, because, like, Area 51's obvious. Why would you put it there? Um, but, like, the whole Bob Lazar thing and that kind of thing. You know? And then, um, what's another one? I, the moon landing was obviously real. There's no, like... People are stupid who say that the moon landing is fake. Right. It's like flat earthers. It's like, but it would be too give- difficult. It's like, no, they just did it. But it doesn't look right. That's because it's on the moon. You're used to, to footage on the earth. Um, And then there's something about the Las Vegas shooting that's really interesting. The story there is kind of suspicious. Only because there's one Sonic meme. <laughs> it's this video of like the Sonic the Hedgehog animated series theme song, but with this vo- this guy doing a voice of Sonic while he's like, you know, during the Las Vegas shooting, the blah, 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 and he goes through these these things about how um, there were multiple like guns were being fired from multiple directions and the it had a firing rate much faster than the gun that they said it was and um, all that jazz, which is really, uh, really suspicious, really interesting, in, in my opinion. Do you have any uh, conspiracy theories that you believe in? Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's really the only one that I've ever really vocalized and been like, yeah. But other than that, I don't really, I guess, focus too much on them. Valid. If you could live in one place for a year, one place on the entire earth for a year, mm-hmm. all expenses paid, okay. where would it be? Scotland. Why Scotland? Because it's beautiful. They've got like the nice little hills, and then they have like all those old castles that I'd like to frolic in. And I think <laughs> <laughs> it'd be great fun. And the the um, accent is pretty neat too. The accent's good. The ruins of the Notter Castle near Stonehaven. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Yep. <laughs> or hmm. that or Italy. I might do Italy. Too. Have you heard that song, Northern Italy? No. By who? I don't know. <laughs> but it it it's a really good and it's really slow and I really like it. But it it's it's um it makes me want to go to Italy. I have a friend who when he like straight out of high school when he graduated, he joined the army and he's been living in Italy cuz that's where they stationed him. For the past four years. That's dope. Mm-hmm. But then he's like, yeah, Italy is kind of overrated right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, all right. He's a Korean. <laughs> in Italy. And he's like, yeah, I'd rather like go to Austria for skiing and that kind of stuff. I'm like, okay, that's nice. <laughs> Have you ever been skiing? No. No. Well, why do you say that? Because I... <laughs> I don't think I have the coordination in any capacity to be able to ski. That's a that's a quitter attitude right there. No, it's a I value my legs. Yeah, I'm gonna tighten like your attitude. headset real quick. Okay. Is it tight enough now? Is it not falling over? Or is it falling down? It's like no, it's like up. It's up? Like too high up? Yeah. <laughs> is that does that work? Too high still? Oh. Are you okay? Yeah. Now I just see you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're on pass-through mode. Bunk, bunk. Is it back? Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool, isn't it? 
You you saw the the Big Hero Six face on it, right? Yeah, the little Big Max. Isn't that so cute? It's cute. It's pretty neat. All right, can you continue? Is are you at the the right place? Yeah, I'm good. All right, cool. And if if you want to after the break, because we'll have we'll have a break in a minute, we can um play super hot instead. Okay. Or just talk instead, like face to face. I'm if you'd, if I'm good with either. Cool. Either option. Either way. Mhm. Um. Have you ever interviewed someone before? Um. Yes, actually. A word? Yeah. Um. In high school, I did the news for Chester T. Basically, I was a little news anchor, and so we ha- would have like interviews with um, other students, and then also any like faculty members. So, did that. Nice. Yeah. Oops. Did I hear that? Sorry. Your mic died, and so I'm using my mic to record your your voice. That's why it's in the way. It's okay. I just felt bad hitting you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me think. I feel like I I want to go to Malta. I kind of want to have my wedding in Malta, destination wedding, because it, it's super beautiful there, and there's also a lot of Catholic culture, like this order of knights pulled up there in um, a while ago. <laughs> I, this is the Gen Z version of it. So order of knights pulled up there a while ago. They got uh, high-key stranded, and um, a couple of them uh, were like, yo this place dope for real for real and they established like they established a bunch of um cathedrals and everything and so a lot of the architecture there is really cool and stuff that would be cool yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) what's your opinion on america as a country (laughs) in just in general yeah i mean i i'm happy to live here I like America. I feel like there's, I mean, with every country and wherever you go, there's always going to be things that need mending and fixing. But as a whole, I I like America. I approve. Word. And we are back. Marty Swanson. <laughs> Marty Swamp. You no longer have a headset on. No, I don't. As you're getting ready for your marriage to, to come... Um, well, what are your feelings towards the, the day? <laughs> like, like, are you nervous that you'll get everything ready in time? Oh. Yeah, I, I know me. I'm a, I'm a good little planner. I might procrastinate a bit on a couple of things, but uh-huh. it'll get done. So. <laughs> um, no, I'm not, I'm not really nervous about the planning of it all. That's not. I like it planning things, so it's actually been really fun. It's been a little stressful because mm-hmm. there's a lot of different little parts that go into it that you never really thought about, which apparently, like, apparently, like, having a scent, like a wedding <laughs> scent. What? It's a wedding scent. It's a thing you do, apparently. It's where, like, the bride gets a scent, like a perfume that she nev- has never worn before, so the groom has, like, never, like, smelled it on her before or whatever, and so it's, like, only tied to their wedding like it's just a connection to the wedding day wacky yeah and it's like i don't wear perfume normally uh-huh. <laughs> so okay if you could say like top five worst things about wedding planning or top three just three things no particular order just like the most annoying things about so wedding planning far? yes that I've experienced so far that I've experienced is finding a caterer that's not trying to like take you for a ride just like with all the crazy fees that really shouldn't be there Mm -hmm. um and then (laughs) the registry picking the registry was stressful because that every we finally, we finally got it done. But like towards in the beginning, every single time we mentioned the registry, we started like having little spats because 
my idea of what is necessary for our household <laughs> is not the same as what he thinks is necessary. Like what? Like, like with um, I we we both got to put this on the registry, but I really valued the importance of having colorful wine glasses. <laughs> <laughs> had like rainbow hues in it you know and he really wanted a nice knife set for the kitchen so one time i was at tj maxx with my mom and we passed by these rainbow cutlery stuff this like mm. it, it, it's like a cool like metallic rainbow color and i was like when i get an apartment that is what i'm gonna have in it my roommate one of my roommates had that when we moved in but there's only like one knife i don't know where all the other ones are <laughs> just the one just one just one so that's you need a few things what is, what is the the registry like what service does that go through so <laughs> if you want to donate. <laughs> yeah i'll just put the link in the show notes so anyone who wants to can donate um we have a honeymoon fund too if you want to That'd be nice. Um, but anyways, I'm kidding. Anyway. <laughs> if you want to, I'll put that in there. I mean, we have like three listens per episode, so I don't know how generous people will be. But. Sure. Um, I mean, okay. No, I um, we are doing it through The Knot, which is like one of like the big wedding companies that have like all these different guides and planners and like help you kind of – they have like an app mm-hmm. and then like helps you with the process and gives you like a countdown and checklist and all that nonsense um so you can set up a website and you can set up a registry on it and you can link different stores and that kind of thing on it or they have their own registry platform that they have like with different brands that partner and you can just kind of pick and choose what you want on it whoa yeah i never really think about the whole industry behind it because it's a big industry no it's (laughs) it's like okay so if i went into a bakery and I wanted a birthday cake. Mm-hmm. And I said I wanted like a three tier birthday cake with like edible flowers and blah, 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 blah. And then if I went in and got the same exact birthday, like birthday cake, if I went and got the same exact cake but said it was a wedding cake, it like jacks the price <laughs> up like crazy because you slapped the word wedding on there. Uh-huh. Even though it's the same cake that you would do for like a birthday, it's, yeah. Have you considered buying a birthday cake but with nothing on it? And then just writing happy wedding. <laughs> um, so I actually, we're actually only doing like a one tier cake that's going to be like this big. This big. <laughs> that's it? Well, yeah, maybe a little bigger. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, no, it's one tier. It's small. It's a small cake because we don't really eat cake. We're going to have an ice cream bar instead. <gasps> mm-hmm. Delish. That's the plan anyways, but... His neighbor, his, uh, his mom's house, or like his house, they have, she makes all these sorts of bakery things and whatever, and she actually made our engagement cake, and it was really pretty, so she's gonna do her, do our cake. Groovy. Mm-hmm. And I found, I found, cake, <laughs> I found cake toppers that are little pine cones. <laughs> But they're dressed up as bride and <laughs> I was about to ask about that. Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure you don't want, like, a, a Fred Weasley and a George Weasley, but once in a dress and once in a suit? No, because they're brothers. <laughs> That's weird. So. <laughs> so are Harry Potter fans. I'm sure it's out there somewhere. <laughs> Not in this house. If 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 you could have one really obscure animal as a cake topper, a wedding t- cake topper, what would it be? Uh, <laughs> I'm talking like the hammerhead shark <laughs> wedding toppers. No, 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 I wouldn't do that. Um, you know what I would actually probably do? I would do a little meerkat. Because I think a little Aww. meerkat. Because you can make it look like he's popping out of the cake. Uh-huh. And he has a little tack. <laughs> what would what would be the funniest animal to be in a um, wedding dress? A Brussels, a Brussels Griffon dog. Brussels Griffon dog. Yeah, that's the dog I want in the future. It looks like a little baby Ewok, and it always. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of them has a full beard. <laughs> 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 and, 
And I love them so much. <laughs> I think the concept of a hammerhead shark in a in a <laughs> one in a little wedding dress with the big the big <gasps> little veil would be like <laughs> It would be super tiny. What if it got in his eyes? <laughs> Are the eyes like on the side or no, like on the hammer? They're on the... I'm trying to think of I Finding Nemo. I, I think it's like under. Like you got the hammer thing. Then it's it's Finding underneath. Nemo, it was on the sides. I don't think Finding Nemo is probably the most, <laughs> the most accurate. The most accurate. But I don't know. What's your favorite cocktail? Mm. Like mocktail or like cocktail? You're 22, Mary. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like anything that has gin in it. <laughs> I just can't get over the fact that you were like scared to say <laughs> you've been you've you've been able to drink legally for over a year. Yeah, I went to I went to confession once and I said that I was like drinking and he's like he's like how old are you and I was like I'm 21. <laughs> this is like when I just turned 21 and he's like why are you confessing that? I was like, I felt like that was something I <laughs> needed to do. And he's like, you're of age. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you're right. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything with gin in it? Yeah. So uh, at Spirits, um, which is a little restaurant on the Delano Square that's delicious, they have a couple of gin drinks. Um, I think it's called one of those, like, the Seven Wonders or whatever. Mm. It's delicious. Um yeah, you can make gin taste good with anything because it's like, it's not super potent. Have you had aviation gin? No, I don't know. What is that? That's Ryan Reynolds' gin. Oh, no, <laughs> I've not. So if I asked my mom to buy aviation gin for you as a wedding gift, you would, you would buy it? You would have it? I guess. You don't, you don't make cocktails at home, though. Not usually. If I'm at home, I might going to be, like, drinking wine or a seltzer. Or just a full bottle of vodka from the bottle. No. No. Liquor is only, like, if I'm going, if I'm, I only have liquor if I'm drinking it in a cocktail at dinner because I, I don't know. Damn dinner parties be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because I just, I don't know scares me <laughs> so. that makes sense yeah i i have started to enjoy more bitter things like coffee oh, i drink okay. coffee now <laughs> i'm getting there i'm getting there but like and and like dad will let me try my try his beer and i'm like that's that, that's all right but like he, he lets me try his bourbon and i'm like nope i'm good mm -hmm. take take a little sip of that nasty it's nasty i mm -mm. Although, this Christmas season, my roommate got, introduced me to Whiskey Nog. Delicious. <laughs> Interesting. Absolutely. Have you had hot buttered rum? No. My parents make that every Christmas, and apparently it's it's pretty good. Sound, sounds good. They also have this thing called a Tom and Jerry, which also has alcohol in it, but you can have it just with milk. But apparently that's good, too. I tried some. Oh, <laughs> Mom also got, like, this... I think it's vodka. No, I don't know what it is, but it's like a peppermint. Peppermint schnapps. Something like that. But it is. It was so. It was. It was really interesting flavor, because it like, it warms you up without being warm, because there's alcohol in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For the record, I'm drinking. Uh, club soda with strawberry syrup and lime syrup in it. Yes, I am drinking nothing. So, let the record show. I asked her if she wanted <laughs> something to drink, and I said no. I was thinking about because <laughs> because since I started drinking coffee, my parents have like because they're so used to only having coffee for them, mm -hmm. and so I'm the only one in the house that drinks coffee with them. So. 
I'll be like, y'all need to make more coffee. And they're like, we made a whole thing of coffee. It's just there's three people that share it. And I don't really believe that. I think that's kind of suspicious because I don't think there's that much coffee in that. Like, I think there's more coffee. But also my dad takes a big cup of it to work with him. So anyway, I I had some coffee. And then I I was going to be like, hey, Mary, do you want some coffee? And I was hoping you'd be like, no. And I'm like, good, because we don't have enough for you. You did. No, I, I, I didn't say that exact thing. I, I didn't offer you coffee. No, you offered me something to drink. Yeah. And you said... And I specifically said we don't have any coffee for you. Yes. And then you said... Jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mom. Yeah. Um, Mary told me that she still has the coffee you gave her because she doesn't have a grinder. And so she just walks by it and smells it every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> it smells good and I'm like wow but that's good <laughs> have you ever ground your own coffee no you just buy it by the ground yeah I mean my I grew up with my mom buying like the big old red Folgers container of just ground coffee I don't know what that means I guess you don't either <laughs> um I, it's uh Segways are weird. Mm. Have you ever listened? Do you are you a comedian listener to or watcher of? Not, not really. No. Aside from all of the Harry Potters, what do you like to watch and or listen to? Like TV shows or podcasts? Yeah. Um, for, for podcasts, I listen to Honest Gun and Honest Gun. Honest Gun. Honest to God is what she said. Yeah. Plug in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I listen to It's a Harry Potter podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't really listen to podcasts often. It's only if I have like a long drive. Um, and then usually I'm just listening to music. Or at home I'm watching New Girl. And I like New Girl. Yeah, it's my favorite show. It's really just new girls. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite character? Nick. Nick? Not Schmidt? I love Schmidt. I love Schmidt too, but I also love Nick. He's a, he's, he's, he's a good one. I When I edit my parents' podcast, I have to put in quotes at the beginning and the end. And for the last episode I did, I put in new girl quotes for both of them. And one of them were, was where Schmidt goes to the um, their his kids' um the kindergarten and he's mm-hmm. like um do you know where blah, blah blah is and this little kid goes a white man broke in today he goes a white man <laughs> no what did security do about it Nothing. typical <laughs> <laughs> he's so funny. Mm-hmm. He is funny at the ski retreat we talked about how unbelievably attractive father mike schmidt is that's fair yeah and just how, like, really attractive he is. That's pretty much it. That's- well, it's segued from how Camden's boyfriend was attractive. But, <laughs> and how we all agreed on that. And then, naturally, obviously, the next person in attractiveness is Father Mike Schmidt. That's where your brain goes to. Mm-hmm. If you had to rate <laughs> Father Mike Schmidt <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10, um... <laughs> what would you rate him? I'll, I'll give him an eight. Eight? Yeah. 9.5? <laughs> he's short. He's short? I'm pretty sure he's shorter. Who's a 10? Mark Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> to me, <they> shall. <laughs> <laughs> That was a real answer. I was waiting for that one. What what are your what are the activities that you would never find yourself doing like skydiving or skiing? We've already discussed that, mm. but like what are that kind of thing that you would just rather die than doing? Um, hiking up Mount Everest. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I thought you were going to stop at hiking among Mary. It's not that scary. No, I would never do that. That sounds awful. Looks terrifying. Nope. Um, Word. I would maybe, maybe try skydiving. Sky Diving. I'd have to be feeling particularly brave that day, but I also feel like they'd have to end up pushing me out the plane because uh-huh. I would never drop. They would have to do it themselves. <laughs> well, they they say on three, and then they go one, two, and they push on two because everybody grabs on three. A Will Smith quote. That was a Will Smith quote. What about indoor skydiving? That's yeah, I could do that. Sure. Work. I wouldn't. No. <laughs> I I really I want to be like become a professional skydiver so I can like with Red Bull or something cuz I just love the concept of falling with just like nothing beneath you cuz we spend our whole lives touching the floor like all the time it's like gravity or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and so the concept of like falling for an extended period of time cuz have you ever like jumped off the top of a like a um a dock, like a two-story dock, and you've jumped off the top, yeah, and there's and it, that second where you're freaking out yeah. because your body doesn't know what to do. It's like that for like five minutes. I don't know how long skydiving takes. Yeah, see, I've never been skydiving. See, yeah, I'm all right. <laughs> I'm okay. So what's an activity that you would really want to do? Um, I wouldn't mind scuba diving or like snorkeling, not scuba diving. No, snorkeling is that safe and that's fun and there's little fishies all around scuba diving and fight sharks so. <laughs> no. i i hate fish freak me out fish are weird looking the ocean freaks me out and it just makes me so uncomfortable like fish in general like like if i'm in any body of water and i feel anything touch my leg i'm like okay i'm done that's all yeah. thank you it doesn't, it doesn't bother me if I can see it, if, like, the water's clear and I can see what's happening. And I'm like, oh, it's just a piece of seaweed. And then we go on with our lives. But in, like, Lake Lanier, no. <laughs> I'm running. <laughs> Do you believe the stories about Lake Lanier? I don't think it's stories. It's, like, a factual thing, is it not? Word. Like, Would you ever want to, for those of the, you that don't know, multiple people have died in the lake that is five minutes from my house. That and that it like there's old towns and like roads and the beneath it beneath yes that's so interesting to me yeah if you could travel back in time Mm. where would you go temporally and physically okay temporally seventies I can rock with the seventies all the way um and then. You said ge- ge- geography? Geographically. Geographically. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know. I guess it would be cool to go and see, um, like, Italy and, like, Rome. Mm, before people had smartphones? Yeah. Just kind of, like, wander. Yeah. I was reading this thing. About this guy, I don't know any of the specifics, but he liked people watching, but he doesn't do it anymore and it, in Paris, but he doesn't do it anymore because nobody's interesting because they're just on their phones all the time. Mm-hmm. I, I, came up, I was talking to Tommy one time and I came up with this hypothetical and it's really interesting, so I, I want to get your opinion on it. Sure. So starting in the 40s, okay. you spend a week in every decade. So... Like, at the end of the week, you will just disappear from that decade and reappear 10 years later. In the 50s. In the 50s and okay, then so in the like 60s. The beginning of the 40s to the beginning of the 50s. Beginning. So it's never, like, the whole century. It's, like, January. January of, or whatever. It's January now. Okay. So let's just say January of the 50, 40s, then January 1st, or January of. Of the 50s. Okay. Yeah. So you travel a decade each week until you get to the present. Okay. Well, what, what is your game plan? So, so let's say um, you had like a day to – are you raising your hand? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What's your question? 
is the decade am i in gainesville georgia dawsonville georgia at the beginning of each decade or is it like a different location you are exactly where you disappeared okay so you have a week a day to prepare okay you have 24 hours to prepare and then wherever you are at the end of that 24 hours you appear at that spot in the 40s okay and then by the end of that week wherever you are you appear in the 50s I, that's hard. So it could be like a road trip thing every yeah, week. Yeah. And I feel like I would also just buy stuff and then bury it. I think, I think I would want to like do Europe first, hit all the different spots. I would probably research of like what was happening during each time period. I don't think you want to go to Germany in the 40s, I'll I mean, be honest. I I'm mean, probably not. Um, but like, <laughs> actually, I might skip Europe until... Until later. Until later. I'll go to Europe in like the 70s. <laughs> Were flights readily available to Europe in the 70s? I don't know. Me neither. I guess that's one of the things I would have to research. What would you be the most excited to outfit-wise? What decade? 70s. Why the 70s? Pretty- because it's so cool. I prefer like the 50s and 60s. I like, okay, I like 70s and 80s mm. clothes because I'm more of a pants person. Um, so, <laughs> so I, I, mean, I do like some of the 50s dresses, but I just, I think the fun colors and the different patterns and prints more suit me and my personality. Mm-hmm. And you see a lot more of that style in the 70s. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. I I like suits. I I I rewatched La La Land recently, and I I got so like Ryan Gosling wears a different suit in every scene, and I'm like I want to be him. I want twelve different suits that I can wear every single day, and so the fifties and sixties where everybody was wearing a suit and dresses, like it it seems so much cooler. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm excited to go to WCC because at, in class, like that's it's a good dress code, you know. You feel me, brother? Yeah. <laughs> I I click something. Okay. I think we're good. We're chilling, big chilling. We have approximately five minutes left. Okay. You have to leave as soon as this is over. (laughs) Jude, how much time we got on there? Three, three, four minutes? Three minutes and 50 seconds left. Marty Swanson, is there anything you want to talk about that we didn't talk about? No, (laughs) not anything pressing. Have you ever played Minecraft? Yes. How experienced are you at Minecraft? I'm, I'm, you know, I can build things. I can build a nice little house. You didn't talk about staying chased. Oh, vroom, vroom. All right. Segways are weird. Mary, you're engaged. <laughs> yet to be married. You're also Catholic. Mm-hmm. How is it staying chaste during your engagement? I mean... It's, it's a challenge. Like, it's, you kind of have to just have a lot of communication in that instance and just be, like, making sure boundaries are set and making sure you don't cross those boundaries. And it's challenging because, like, I love him and he loves me and it's just, like, you know. But it's... it's Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up. <laughs> he loves you? I know. It's really gross. <laughs> That's a big ick for me. <laughs> when my partner loves me back. <laughs> Gross. Um, <laughs> remember what you said. <laughs> boundaries, communication. Oh, yeah, you just have to make sure that you're setting boundaries, and if you feel like something is gonna get crossed, you just have to like immediately remove yourself from that situation. Mhm. So it's just that, but like a bunch. Yeah, basically. Baller. Um. You've lived with roommates, and you've had a brother. 
How do you think it will be living with your your future husband? Um, I think it's gonna be kind of awkward. <laughs> <laughs> like you're gonna wake up and you're like, you're still here. Right here. <laughs> like, like, okay. Um. My I, mom is nodding her head yes. <laughs> I think it's gonna be a bit strange. I mean, I'll, I'm excited to like see him every day because like you know obviously i don't see him every day so i'm excited to do that but it's also like i feel like i am gonna have moments where i'm like can you please just leave the room like <laughs> for one second but i'm nice. prepared for that and so is he so cool well we have like one minute left so uh thank you for being on the show Yes, of course. You're the first person I have who doesn't live in this house. <laughs> so it's been very beneficial for me as far as setting up and that kind of thing. Um, so th this was this was pretty dope. This was pretty fun. Um, good luck, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs>